Hey, what's up guys? This is Kara and I'm a software engineer at Canva. And today I'm going to tell you how I landed my first internship at Microsoft. I will run you through my whole experience from creating the CV, submitting the CV, applying, getting the first interview, the second interview, all the questions, my answers, my way of answering them and what I think actually made me get the internship. Microsoft internship was the first one I scored from like a legit company. In the future videos, I will also talk about getting the return offer from Microsoft, how the internship actually looked like, also about getting internship at Google, getting my full-time offer here at Canva. So make sure to subscribe if you're interested in those topics, if you want to see more of my experience and how I got those jobs and why I didn't go with any of those big companies afterwards and why I'm now working at Canva as an Android engineer. Let's go back in time. I started coding when I was around 11. At this point, I wanted to be a writer. I had those blogs for around like maybe two weeks when I started being really annoyed at the theme. You have like a set of themes you can choose from, but like I was so picky. I couldn't choose one. I chose one, but then I didn't like it. So I was like, oh, how to modify uh, my look templates. I Googled that. I found out about like HTML and CSS. So then I went to like the coach and started modifying things, removing a little bit, adding a little bit. Uh, so I started learning that purely to create a nicer template for my blog. But then I actually realized I prefer making websites rather than writing the stories and content. So that's what I ended up doing. And I've been doing that for a few years, freelancing a little bit. I, I sold one of my websites when I was 13 and then just like went from there. Fast forward a few years, I discovered Android development. I got my first Android phone, I was probably like 17. I was so in love with this device. This is so much better than a computer, uh, especially that my laptop back then weighed like uh, five kilograms. Okay, I, I love this device. I want to know how to make apps. And then I just started reading tutorials. I even got a book. Who buys books now? That was 10 years ago, so. I got a book on like how to code for Android. I started learning and I created my first app. It's called Memo Planet and you can actually still find it. Not modified since then. I created this first app. I released it to Play Store. Like I registered for an account and everything. I was around 18 then. And that was it. And then I went to another project. I ended up modifying this one later on when I learned about databases. Then I kept coding. I was I was mostly doing like my, my own projects for Android. Always loved making puzzles. So I would make like those puzzle websites. After high school, I applied for computer science at the University of Warsaw, which is the city I'm from and it's in Poland, Europe, not Russia. Since I started uni, I knew that what I want to do is have an internship or a job at Google, Microsoft, Apple, whatever. Uh, I really wanted to work for Adobe back then. Anyway, early on I started asking all of the people at my uni that already had some internship experience about how do you do it? How do I even apply? Where do I apply? Fortunately enough, my uni held events on site where representatives from those companies like Microsoft, Google would come and actually interview us. So you just have to go on the list. They don't necessarily even look at your CV and the interview is like super short, it's like probably 15 minutes or so. So I didn't apply for that <laughs> option actually. I applied for the official Microsoft internship website. I also applied to Google at the same time. Then I had to send my CV. I, I actually already had some work experience. I mentioned this app I published to Google Play. Thanks to that app, I actually scored another job before I got the internship. It was just a part-time job. I was working like one, two days a week making Android apps for uh, for this small Polish company. It's like an outsourcing company. We're writing code for Germans. So I had some work experience. I listed all of my I listed all of my projects, side projects. My CV was fine. Unfortunately, you can't look at it because I don't have it. It wasn't anything impressive. Like you just pretty much list your education, your side projects if you don't really have much work experience. It's good if you have GitHub or like any other online repository where they actually can check your code. They probably won't anyway, but even to just like scan through and like see that you know how to use Git, it's it's a valuable thing. So I sent my CV, there was no answer for a long time. Then Google called back and I actually had an interview with Google, which I failed, but that's another video. And then they wrote to me, they wrote back and they were like, oh, we are inviting you to our uh, Microsoft office in Warsaw. I remember sitting in the waiting room and there was this guy like much older than me. He was saying how he thinks that I have much more chance to actually get this offer because I'm so fresh with the uni knowledge and like all the algorithmics and 
all of that stuff that Microsoft and other big companies test you with. If you don't know yet the big companies interviews, they mostly test your like algorithmics and data structure. You don't even have to know like a specific language. You, you just write everything in pseudocode. If you are at uni and if you are passing the tests, you're probably actually passing the same questions all the big companies would ask you anyway. So at some point I got called in into the room. There was this guy called Chris, who was my interviewer for the day. We had a little bit of chat. The thing is at that point my English was horrible. Like, not that my English is good now, but at that point it was horrible. I, I would barely speak English. So it was a really stressful experience for me mostly because of that. I knew that I know how to code, but I wasn't sure if I can actually express this in English. We had a little bit of a small chit chat at the beginning, which was good because it warmed me up. He asked me two questions. One of them was a technical question with writing some pseudocode uh, on a whiteboard. The second question was more of like a UX design question, but we'll get to it. So the first question was given a sentence, reverse every word in it and print it to the screen. So that's pretty much just like extracting the words, get each word, reverse it. You, you actually have to do it very low level, so you can't just say like word.reverse or whatever you would have in like modern languages with all of the libraries. You actually have to write the reversing logic yourself with like the swapping the elements. And okay, so that was the most horrible explanation I have ever heard. So. <laughs> I wrote down for you guys possible solution in a pseudocode with some comments explaining why and also with some JavaScript samples. It's all in the description below, so make sure to check it out. It's a link to my GitHub. There will be more resources there soon. And let's go back to the video now. The, the thing I did and something that I think helped me a lot is that I was just talking out loud all the time. I immediately had the solution in my head, but I knew it's not the best solution. They look during those interviews, they look at performance. So you're trying to optimize your solution. The truth is it's sometimes really hard to come up with the most optimal solution. So what you want to do is to actually say, I have a solution for this. It will work correctly. It will cover all the edge cases, but it won't be the most optimal. It won't be the fastest. It might be about the speed or it might be about the memory. You can tell them why you know this is not an optimal solution, but propose it anyway, because then what happens is they they see that you're thinking, they, they see that you know what you're talking about, they see that you have basic. No one expects you to know answer to every question. Actually, what they are looking at is your problem solving skills, your process, if you are able to adapt, to learn. Sometimes they will give you some tips and then they look at whether you're taking those tips or not, because it means that you are actually a team player or you actually take feedback, which is very important. So I, I solved this one, uh, that wasn't too hard. And then he asked me if I'm also interested in product. I said, oh yeah, yeah, I am. Because as I was creating my own apps, I also had to think about product, how I market it, how, what the design is, what the UX is, what are my users. I probably didn't think about it back then. I, I, I probably only learned about like doing startup few years ago, but maybe subconsciously I was. He asked me this question about oh, if Microsoft Excel was on a touch screen, how would you handle this, this, this and this event? I had no knowledge, no education, no experience with this type of questions, but I just answered. I just said whatever I was thinking. I was like, okay, let's just go with the intuition. I proposed some solutions for it, some, some different options. And that was the interview. That was like the main questions. And then we had a little bit more of a chit chat when we started talking about like my favorite tech. And then I mentioned my Android engineering experience. Of course, he started asking the questions like, oh, why Android not iOS? And then also like, those were the times when uh, the Microsoft phone system was alive. So it was a really awkward thing where I had to explain why I'm not using a Microsoft phone to a Microsoft employee. He told me a little bit more about what the Android engineers are working on in, in his office. And that was it. So around a week later, I got an answer that this stage of the interview went well and they want to invite me to Oslo, Norway, to interview in the office. I'm not actually sure if this works this way for other continents <laughs> or is it just a European thing that like for the second stage on, on the, of the interview, they just fly you on site. I was excited because I went abroad once before. I had like no traveling experience. Like ju just the flight itself was cool for me. They paid for everything. So they paid for the plane. They paid for my hotel for two days when I was there. And in the day of the interview, I was stressing so much. Not only you're in a different country, again, having to speak English to actually not native English, English speakers this time, which is even like double hard. The fact that I have this interview that like, it's serious now. It's not just like, oh, let's go and see how it goes. It's like, I already passed something. So now I felt like I have something to lose. I was preparing a lot, but like, I made sure to have enough sleep, relax a little bit before, and I wasn't really preparing much on the day. I went for the interview. The office was really cute. It was really colorful. They take you on like actual floors with their meeting rooms. There are other engineers. You can have a look, you can meet some people. There was like, 
four of us interviewing, I think, or maybe six. So we were all in one room at this time and they were just calling every single person to another room and they were asking questions. The structure was that you have three or four interviews each 50 minutes and if the majority wants to hire you they hire you i guess i don't really remember all of the questions the only one i remember was to write all of the fibonacci numbers all of the questions were were you write on a whiteboard one of them was architectural we were just talking but that was also the guy that was an android engineer so the interview from being an interview about like app architecture turned quickly into talking about the android development and like our favorite features and everything i actually had three interviews not four so i guess I guess I did well and they didn't need being convinced anymore. You don't know on the day or do you know on the day? I think you know on the day. I think they tell you straight away. I think you wait like 20 minutes and then they give you the offer straight away. So yeah, I landed the offer. So I knew that for summer I'm coming to Norway, work at Microsoft. That was honestly so exciting. I was so happy and like even the rejection from Google. I was like, oh, Google, see, someone wants me. Uh, Microsoft was nice enough to help me with accommodation, so they paid for like half the price of the accommodation. They also found it for me. So I honestly didn't have to worry at all. That was so sweet. They buy you a ticket, they buy you, they pay you for, for the accommodation. They also pay you pretty well as an internship. For three months, you earn like 120 knock. So that's like pretty good money, especially like me coming from Poland. Yeah, that was my experience. I hope you liked it. I hope you found something useful. If you could like this video, click that subscribe button so you can get notified about all the upcoming videos I really want to make, all the different experiences I had, and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much, guys.